Make sure you watch the video on the Klein Bottle Rubik's Cube on the main mythology channel before you watch this video. The Klein Bottle Rubik's Cube is part of Magic Tile. I want to give you a little bit of an introduction to actually working with this program. There's a special folder. If you expand it out, you get lots and lots of different puzzles that you should look at first. Let's start with something familiar, the Mega Minx puzzle. Here's a spherical view of this. If you hit F6, you switch to the plain view. This is stereographic projection, so you can have a look at this. It looks like you're kind of looking at it from the inside. If you hit F7, you toggle between different plain views of this puzzle. This is gnomonic. Hit one more time. This is a fisheye view. This is one that I really, really like. It shows you all the faces at one glance. We're switching to a torus. So this is kind of the view we had in the main video a couple of times. Hitting F6 again gets you this guy here. You can rotate it in all sorts of different ways. Um, inside out, like that. Uh, and to find out what's possible here, maybe just poke around a little bit in this help menu here, which lists all the different things you can do with your mouse. First thing I want to do is I want to show you how you can design algorithms and record them using Magic Tile. And it's really, really nice. I mean, a lot nicer than when you actually have a physical model to work with. So I switch back f6 to this fish eye view i want to create a full set of algorithms for solving the mega minx puzzle so what's good about a simulator like this well first thing is you know scramble really quick uh, you can automatically solve like this you can reset whenever you feel like it you can record moves and let's just do that to design some of these algorithms so you're probably familiar with this from the normal rubik's cube there's algorithms that just flip two edges. So I want to show you how you can design one of those things. We press Control Alt. Click on one of the pieces that we want to manipulate, like this edge here. We're going to click near a corner. So the moves are going to be defined with respect to this corner. Let's just see, we left click and left click gives us a counterclockwise rotation of this face here. We right click there, that gives us a clockwise rotation. This one we move out of the way. Well, let's just turn it a little bit more, just like that, move it back in place. And with the Mega Minx, what's nice about it is you've got a lot of space to move things around. So what we've done now is we've left this face here untouched except for flipping this edge. And well, we've messed out some bits outside, which we don't care about at the moment. So we're just going to record what we've got so far. That's going to be recorded in this section here. So we'll just go up here and say end macro definition and call this say a reset everything you can now execute a wherever you want so for example if you want to execute in the same spot we just pressed on alt and then left click so same thing if we right click with alt held down we do everything in reverse so here we can also apply this to different parts of the puzzles for example down here if i click uh, things get flipped and then the outside is exactly the same you can bring this to the middle and you can just kind of see what's happening here. Uh, right click with Alt held down restores the whole thing. Now this is not a really useful yet. To make it useful we'll start another macro. So hold down Control Alt and we click left. We execute A. So hold down Alt and click execute it. All right now we give this face here a twist and then we right click with Alt held down that does A in reverse. And you can see when you do that, it fixes up the outside and just in the face, we've got two edges flipped now. So we record this and macro definition. And so we've just made up an algorithm that flips two edges. Perfect. And we can use this now wherever we need it. So it's very useful. So for example, clicking here those two. Uh, now in a scrambled puzzle like that, click here, click again, click, 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 click. You see it's only these two edges that are affected. Now let's make up an algorithm that twists corners. So let's start recording again. So we record, we'll move this guy 
down there. We'll move it over here. We'll move that one here back. We'll move that one over here. We'll bring that down. We'll put that one in here. We'll move that one there. And what we've done now is just twist that corner here, at least as far as this face is concerned. Uh, and outside we've got things messed up a little bit again. So we record this. And we can record it as B, reset our state. And now if we want to execute this, we just have to click here with Alt press down. And now if you click right, it does the whole thing. So let's make up now this useful macro. Control Alt, click, start the recording, hold Alt down, execute B, I give this a twist, execute B in reverse by holding down Alt and right clicking and untwist here. And we've got an algorithm that just twists these two corners. Perfect. And so we record. All right. Now we also want to move things. For that one, uh, we'll start by exchanging these two edges. Next recording here. So we move things out of the way. We'll put that somewhere else for the moment. We'll bring that back. We'll move it over. We get rid of the sides again. And now we'll just switch this guy in here. Bring this back. Bring that back. Move that over. Get rid of the sides. Move this up. This one back. That one back. And the overall effect of all this was, well, this face is unchanged, except that these two edges have been switched around. So let's record what we've done so far. Let's see. And now we'll turn this into something useful. Here we go. So record another macro. Execute C by holding down Alt. We'll give it a twist. We'll execute C in reverse and we untwist this thing here and you see the thing that's happened is we've created a three cycle here of edges. So that's something useful. So we'll record that. So almost there. So we just need one more of these guys. We reset and now the only thing we need still need is to be able to cycle some corners around. Let's start recording. So we'll just move this guy here down. Move it out of the way. Move this back. Move this around the corner. Move that one down. This one goes in there. We'll move that one back. We'll move that one back. We'll move that one out of the corner. This one down. This one in. Shuffled. And we've just exchanged those two corners. Perfect. And we'll record it as D. Reset state, uh, start recording again, execute D, give it a twist, execute D in reverse by holding down Alt and pushing the right button and untwisting and that's created a three cycle of corners here. Okay, so that's something useful. So let's record it as Now we can get rid of A, of B, of C, and of D. Scramble our puzzle. And these guys are all algorithms. They're really the only algorithms that we need to solve this whole thing really, really quickly. So it didn't, didn't really take that long. And we can also use them on the spherical view. So cycle three, three edges. Now you can also explore some of these other things that are here. There's actually streamlined ways of going through all this process, summarized under commutator, the setup moves that you're probably familiar with. Uh, you can actually now save your macro files. If you're in the middle of a very complicated solve, you can save your solve up to this point. Or if it comes to verifying that you really solved the puzzle, you can save a complete log file of your solve. In the second part of the video, I'll solve a Harlequin puzzle. Harlequin puzzles are some of the simplest Rubik's Cube type puzzles you'll ever encounter. There's quite a few of them in Magic Tile. 
They only have two types of pieces and well what I really like about them is that they exhibit all the nice bits and pieces that you come across in Rubik's Cube type puzzles in general. So for example you need algorithms to solve them. Actually you only need one algorithm to solve all of these puzzles and this algorithm is the simplest <laughs> Rubik's Cube algorithm you'll ever encounter. It only consists of four moves. The other thing uh, that you'll come across is parity problems. So sometimes uh, you hit those in Rubik's Cubes like four times four times four, five times five times fives, and lots of other places where there are identical pieces. So you also got this sort of thing happening in Harlequin Rubik's Cubes, but again in the simplest possible way so you can actually you know explore the Harlequin puzzles, uh, come across all these important features, get used to them, and then move on to harder puzzles. So these Harlequin ones, they all have something in common. They are all edge-turning puzzles. And in fact, there's only two pieces in these puzzles. There is these edge pieces that just get flipped. And then these lens-like pieces that can actually travel around on the surface here. So, you know, so this one you can sort of travel around. Let's just go for one on a torus, maybe this one here. Okay, switch back to plain view. When you scramble this thing, you see all the edge pieces are basically in place. So you can, you can solve those straight away. You just go into one of those faces and just put all those guys in the right place, in the right orientation. So all the edge pieces are in place. And now we just have to worry about fixing up the lenses which really move around a bit here. But let's just have a look how they can move around which is actually quite interesting. So for example this white lens here if I click this edge here there's really only two things it can do. Now it can either move back in the place where it was or it can move when I click that one here. And it seems to go in straight lines and let's just keep on going until we get back to the beginning. Now I'm actually back at the beginning. So there. And that was like one, one big round trip here that you can see. The lens that we started with can ever only be in these positions here, but in none of the other ones. In fact, there's three different parts like this and every lens belongs to one of them. And what we're going to do when we solve this puzzle is just solve along these paths. And the other thing that I have to show you is this very super duper simple algorithm that just cycles three of those lenses. I'll just go like this. One, two, one, two. And what this has done is it's taken the orange lens here, the yellow lens there, and the blue lens there. So a three cycle. Uh, just like what we did before, but a lot simpler. So let's go for it, I'd say. So we'll scramble it up really nicely. First thing is we'll fix all the edge piece orientations. Now we'll start with the blue face and just see what we can do. So there's this path kind of starting like this, all right? So the blue one is already, so the blue lens is already in place. Now we have red lens. So we kind of just bring this over until it's within reach. Now we can do one of our algorithms. So we do one, two, one, two, and that brings this one here in. Next one is we need something green. So we just kind of creep along here until we see something green. And we just transport this closer until it's within reach of our little algorithm. Two, one, two, and that's in place. So next we need a orange. So we'll just keep on going until we find something orange. There's something orange. So let's transport it. So now that's within reach. So we go one, two, one, two and it's in. Now there's a yellow one. One, two, one, two. Yellow one's in. Uh, 
and actually that whole path is sorted out. So it's it's all there, no problems. Okay, let's do the next one, and I'll just kind of fast forward until I get back. So we again start at at the blue here. Okay, so there the blue is in. If you're lucky, you can solve this puzzle just like that. Uh, but sometimes you get something strange happening. Uh, in one of those lines, you have just two lenses swapped around. And as I mentioned before, this sort of parity problem comes up whenever lines contain identical pieces. And there's actually two identical pieces contained in this line. So there's these two green lenses. They are identical. So we can actually use these two green pieces to get rid of this guy here. So what we'll do is we'll just take this one here and swap it over to the other side. Now I'm going to exchange these two green pieces. So, so that green piece actually came from here. And now we're just going to solve and as if by magic the whole thing is going to be done. So let's just go for it. So there, that one's done. And now you see there's uh, a cycle left over and that we can now solve quite easily. Done. And with this little bit of magic, I'll finish this video.